guys, it's Hey Sophia and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to Craftmas for day 11. And today we are going to be continuing on with our Christmas Village decorations. And we're going to be building some really cool features for our town square. Every little town or village or even in like a big city will always have some kind of area where it's the known area for people to meet up. So you can go, hey, let's go out and grab a drink. Let's meet here. So today we're going to be decorating our town square to be more Christmassy themed, which is typically what you will see in villages in Europe or even in the USA. It's always, even in Australia, the center of the town is always where you'll find most Christmas decorations. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So the first thing I did was I sped up ahead and quickly built a path over to this little area over here. I also built some fence posts so you know people aren't going to be walking off over the edge. I'm just quickly building a little never rack tiled area here. And the reason for that is we're going to be building a fire pit. I want to say thank you to Rabbit Child for reminding me about the fire pits and all the heating I saw in Europe. It's not typically something in Australia because it in the... Uh, at Christmas time it's summer here but I can I remember now when I was in England they had fire pits when I went to the Christmas markets and in France and Germany and Switzerland they had outdoor heaters so we're going to be doing your really good idea so thank you for reminding me and building a fire pit I think there's a couple ways you can do it I'm going to be doing an actual fire pit instead of a more modern electric heating thing because I think in a smaller town maybe they'll be more about easily lighting a fire than paying expensive money for outdoor heaters. There's a couple ways you could do it. You could do fence posts like I had just done and that kind of gives it a more up geometric look or you can do upside down staircases which I'm going to do. You can choose the height that you like. I kind of like this one because the fire is just poking out and you know you're not going to singe your eyebrows off if it's really tall. Um, so we're kind of going for a safety a safety look there. The next thing we're going to do though is some seating. We're going to build one established bench in the area because if you think about a town meeting area, there's always seating of some kind that's already there. The areas are also meant to be quite open, which is why even if it makes sense if all this Christmas stuff was removed because you would just have an open square in your town. But we're going to build one little seat over here. It doesn't matter how you build it. I'm going to do wood for a more traditional look. And then the other thing we're going to be doing is some tables for our Christmas market stalls that we're going to be building. The reason we are doing tables and no chairs with our tables is because when I was walking around Europe, and it makes sense as well. Now let's say if you were to buy a hot drink, which everyone typically does. Normally it's like a hot cocoa, maybe a glue vine. Uh, sometimes children have can have the children punch, which is like a non-alcoholic uh, punch drink for children. Now, when you're drinking your, your drink and you're walking around, you might see a really nice sausage that you really want to buy. So you buy your sausage, so you need to just put your drink down somewhere while you stand and eat it. So around the Christmas markets in Europe, they didn't have seating, but they would have tables for you to put food and drink down as you were eating your food. And then you can pick your drink up and keep walking around. So I have gone for barrels for a really kind of just easy setup, traditional kind of look. You could do whatever you like that you could actually put proper tables down if that's what you could prefer. And I also put lanterns on top of the lab tables to add some very easy lighting. We're going to go ahead though and start building our Christmas market stalls. I am starting my stall base with the spruce bark block because I like the way that it looks. I quickly made it daylight so I can actually show you guys how I'm building. Now the market stalls are seven blocks wide and then they're six blocks from the side, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So they are like seven blocks long and then six wide. And I'm making them about three blocks high. And the reason for this is I don't want them to be obnoxiously tall. Market stalls and chalets they're not as tall as a house they're just little temporary structures you don't want to be making it really tall like this and it's going to look more like a house so we are just building them three blocks high so you get the impression that it is a temporary little structure thing now i'm going to be building two different christmas market stalls and i'm also going to be building a third little hot chestnut train car which will make a little bit more sense when i explain it when we get around to it 
but these Christmas chalets are going to be really easy. I'm using the dark oak slab for my roofing there just because I like the look of it and then to trim it at the front I'm actually going to go ahead and use the acacia and this is because I think the acacia is quite I don't know it's kind of like a very Christmassy wood block it's orange it's very close to red but I, I like the idea of trimming the front of the Christmas market store with the acacia it also adds a little bit more color like a little bit more of a color pop to our build it makes it a little bit more interesting some of the Christmas market stalls in Europe are really extravagant over the top some of them are really cool like I saw some over there that would be like a food theme market stall and then on top of their stall they would have these amazing decorations set up to look like a whole scene with bears holding spatulas and whisk and their glue vine theme cups up there it was really really cool so we're adding a little bit more decoration but still making it quite simple because I don't want to go out there for you guys but I'm just finishing off my roof you could finish it off here on the other side any way you want but I'll probably just replicate the front you can see for my roof I have made it really really simple and not over the top I didn't want to be going crazy I've gone for a slab roof to give a really nice a really, really nice house kind of look without having the harshness that staircase blocks can sometimes have when you're building a house in Minecraft um, and I think the acacia is the nice way to trim it which is why I went for the acacia like I said earlier but I think that's pretty good for our Christmas chalet there now this Christmas chalet shack chateau market store is going to be a food one and this is going to be a kartoffelpuffer now kartoffelpuffer in german basically translates to potato pancake they're super super delicious it's like potato and onion and deliciousness deep fried and they typically would have it with apple mousse which is apple sauce so we're going to be building a kartoffelpuffer store today very traditional and i saw them at every Christmas market I went to in Germany so that's what we're building for the flooring inside our chalet I'm continuing on with the spruce stripped bark block and on the sides you can see that I put the glass panes to make windows now the reason for that is some market stalls are completely wood on the side some are completely clear and then some are windows it depends on what the market stall is typically selling or what they're doing in there majority of the kartoffel puffer stalls I saw had glass windows on the side or were open and the reason for this is they want to invite you into looking at how they make them they want to make you interested in the food um, so that way you could actually look in from the side and see them making up the batter frying them everything like that so I think it's really cool to try and show you guys different ways that you can also make your market stalls now at the front there I have made a very simple deep fryer just making some staircases we're going to put some iron blocks at the back to make a kind of like uh, kind of like a kitchen sanitary bench I also put a trap door at the front of one of them to make it look like a fridge we are also going to add a smoke little vent here for our, our fryer because we we want to make sure that any kind of steam or smoke is easily getting suctioned up into the air up there so we'll do something like that maybe a slab might look better actually make it more like a, a very slim streamlined air vent above our fryer there let's get a slab maybe stone mm. maybe yeah oh, a little bit in more we need it to be over our fryer not in front of it there we go and then what we might do is grab a iron bar there we go put that above perfect okay that's a good little little air vent there for our fryer now if we come over to the back we need a sink because food preparation you need to be able to easily clean up we're also going to make some cupboards up the top for storage because you need people to be easily able to store extra food or sauce uh, I noticed the Germans ate a lot of apple sauce with their Kartoffelpuffer that every store I went to had literally buckets and buckets <laughs> buckets of uh, apple sauce so delicious though with the Kartoffelpuffer so I've made a sink there we're also going to grab a little item frame a couple of lanterns we're going to grab a potato I think I'm going to go for the normal potato not the baked and that's just because I kind of like the more flat look that the potato has the baked potato looks more open and obviously that is baked it's actually cooked our kartoffel puffers are flat like a pancake so I want a more flat look so that's what we're going for there 
Now we could do it on either side, but we might also want to advertise the sources. Uh, we're going to quickly grab a staircase to make a little till looking thing there. Let's put that there, right there, there we go. Um, we're also going to put a bench here, I think. Just so we have somewhere that we can put our sauces, because as soon as the kartoffel puffer is cooked, it gets handed over to the seller person and then they put the sauce on and hand it to you. So maybe we should actually advertise our sauces as well. We're also going to fill up this deep fryer. To I know it's just water, but you guys can think it's it's uh, oil there. There we go. Um, I think I do want to advertise our sauces though. So I'm going to grab a apple to replicate the apple sauce. Now there were a couple of other sauces depending on the market that the people would sell with the kartoffel puffer. The most common one that I saw was garlic sauce. I think it's no block sauce. Uh, so garlic sauce. Um, that was the other typical one I saw served with kartoffel puffers if someone ever did sell them. So we're going to do a pile of sugar because it kind of looks like a pile of garlic sauce. It's a kartoffel puffer and they were typically sold in bunches of three. I'm just going to check that's the right way to spell it. I believe it is. Okay, yep, that was. And then we're going to go three pieces because they always sold them by three in every market I went to. We're going to go about four dollars. They were about three euro fifty um, and sauce. We, maybe I won't put that there. I don't think it's going to fit anyway at all. Even if I do apple slash, I think it's too long. Okay, we're going to leave the sauce, but we have our little item frames of sauce, so I think it should be okay. That will do. So there's our kartoffel buffa. And I think this is looking pretty good. We might add a couple of decorations to the outside. You could do garlands. You could also grab uh, skulls. I quickly made it daytime again. Okay, so I'm going to use spruce. We're also going to grab berries and some little bone meal. So we're going to make a garland at the front just to make it a little bit more Christmassy. I do really like the acacia and I think it does make it Christmassy, but the, the spruce garland on the front here is going to add a little bit more Christmas charm. You can see that already added a little bit more Christmas charm there already. We're also going to continue doing the berry bushes like we had been doing around the Christmas village. Because again, like I said, when I was placing them, I think they're really, really, oh, no, we don't want a lot of grass there. I think they're really, really beautiful and they look like holly bushes, which are very, very traditional for Christmas time. So... We're also going to continue doing our never rack out the front here just because we want to make sure we have a simple strong foundation for the front of our market store. There we go. I think that's pretty good though. So the next thing I've done is I sped up ahead and I built the exact same store, exact same building. Everything's the same, just the decorations are different. So this stall is a glue vine stall. Now glue vine is a, it can be all different kind of things. Typically glue vine is red, red wine, which is heated and has spices like uh, orange peel, lemon peel, uh, cinnamon sticks in there. It's really, really, really delicious. You can have other types though. I have put cauldrons on my counter to look like the giant pots that the hot wine and hot drinks were served in. They would just have these giant cauldron pots all over their counters and would just scoop it out. They sell so much of it. Um, I've also got a couple of barrels in there to look the barrels that the wine would be in. I have added no windows on the side and added pots to the side because the glue vine and hot drink stalls typically had all sides open to be serving heaps of people. And I also added slabs around the, the counter. And that's because typically because it's drinks, people want to kind of be standing there and putting their cups down as they're ordering. The way that the cups would work in Europe is your drink will be advertised as about three euro, maybe four. And then when you actually pay though, the first time they charge you, it will probably be about seven euro. And this is because you pay a price difference of about three, four euro for your cup as a rental. And then once you finish with your drink, you put your cup down, you can either give them back your cup and get back your money or you can keep your cup and then keep reusing it. And you can actually take your cup home. So I collected a bunch of glue vine cups when I was in Europe. I'll put a picture on the screen of all the ones I collected. I would have all different kinds of hot drinks, so not just glue vine. But I put some labels on the front of my uh, pots in my cauldron saying glue vine, apple wine, which was a specialty in the Frankfurt Christmas markets. I've also got Kinder Punch, which is a children's punch hot drink. 
and I also have hot white wine, hot white wine, which was a specialty in the Alsace region in France in the French Strasbourg Christmas markets. I also added a couple of slabs to the sides of the glass windows on our Kartoffelpuffer uh, Christmas market shack, and that's because some of them also had little benches at the sides of the glass window so you could also eat your kartoffel puffer that you just got and watch them make more it would make you very hungry but so we're going to continue on and build our last market store which is a little bit tricky and they're a little bit funny but in the christmas markets in europe they sell a lot of hot chestnuts and they typically sell them by like 100 or 200 gram bags but one of the big ways that they would sell them is in these cars which were made to look like trains that's probably the best way i can describe it if you look up on google images something like chest hot chestnuts christmas market train car you'll probably get an idea but basically they were designed as a car they've got wheels you drive them except where the engine for the car is they've made it look like a train so kind of like this i am going to change my block so so this is just a rough draft but they are very thin inside enough room for just a seat to drive your train car the engine where the hot chestnuts would be made and then they would also have like glass windows where they would serve other things like other snacks or drinks so they were really good for the christmas markets because they could easily just drive around and set up on whatever road they wanted to be set up on so for something like this, you want it to be about three blocks long and three blocks wide. And this would be your area where you actually have the guy or the girl who would sit in there and sell them. And then at the front of it, you want to go two blocks longer to make the engine. And I put on top of mine also the little funnel um, just to kind of make it look like the steam train little pipe that would pop out the steam. But I sped up ahead and changed the block colors, which I said I would do. Now I changed instead of black I have gone for the dried kelp because typically the trains were in these really traditional rich old colors like emerald greens and stuff like that and I think the dried kelp is the closest look to an emerald green and I don't mind the the lines on them it kind of looks like a really nice kind of paint job I have putting a glass window at the back here one for rear view driving so the person can actually see and one which would be the area where he would serve from or she would serve from and they would have hanging snacks up in the window so that's what that front little window is there i also changed the slabs on the bottom to be a stone brick instead of the stone uh, slab so instead of the the smooth stone slab we're going for a natural stone slab and that's just to make it give it a more rough uh, iron look i also changed the roof to be a matching stone slab we need to move that there we go i have put a we'll put a little chair in here making a little staircase block there we go and i also had a furnace at the front now you can change it and just say oh there's a furnace in the engine and not have to put a furnace it's completely up to you i have also added some wheels which i use black concrete with stone buttons on them and then put a item frame on top of the stone buttons i also have some duck oak trap doors to make a trimming over the wheels but i think i would change that because i think it'll look better as a as a stone i think so yeah that looks a lot better but you can kind of see what i mean it looks like a train but it's a it's a car and they would cook the the hot chestnuts in the engine kind of area you, if you look them up on google you'll i don't think i took a picture of one but they're really interesting and i saw them everywhere like every market had these <coughs> so i think it's a really cool thing that you can add I just put a stone slab at the front there and a button to look like a door to get into the car train for the hot chestnuts and we're also going to add a sign i don't think there's anything that looks like a hot chestnut except the mushroom stew which sounds a little bit funny but the the hot chestnuts look like a chestnut so they've got a darker skin on the bottom of the chestnut and then they have a lighter top bit so i think the mushroom stew is actually probably the closest thing that looks like it we're also going to put a sign here we're going to go hot chestnuts and they typically sold them by 100 grams and then upwards so we're going to do 100 grams for like three euro which i think was about the price so three dollars <coughs> fifty but i think that looks pretty close and i'm quite proud of myself because i've 
I've, I'm, I've told you guys before, I'm not too good at transport, so I'm actually quite pleased with how that looks. So we're going to quickly add some little cobwebs here, just so it look like a little steam coming out. That's something you don't have to do. They didn't typically have steam, but I think it adds a lot more character to our village as well. But I'm actually really, really happy with that. I'm quite proud of myself, you guys. We made a hot chestnut train car. But there you go, you guys. There is how to build some Christmas market stalls and outdoor tables and entertainment and hot chestnut train cars in Minecraft. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun building our town square here. Just a little one because it's only a little Christmas little village. We don't need a lot of stalls. But please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Comment down below what other Christmas market stalls do you think you would build in Minecraft? And also don't forget to push the notification bell for notifications every time I do post. Like always guys, thank you so so much for watching. Thank you. Bye.